Bonnie Exeter with the Association of Texas Professional Educators. Um, and before I address uh, this charge, um, let me just say that we're certainly happy um, outside of this hearing, um, because since I noticed you sort of motioning to come and have a discussion about TEKS, TEKS writing, more broadly, the math can certainly be included in that, but all of those, if that's an area that you're interested in, we certainly have ideas for how to improve that process, but since it's not the charge today, we'll move on. Um, well, you know, we don't come up with the TEKS. Right. As you know. Obviously, yes. The um, state board does that, and we, that's we're right. trying to encourage them to, to, to the change. State board. Pardon? You fund the state board. Our legislature. We don't fund them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you they get paid a whole lot. Maybe I to consider that. We're going to hear that from them. We don't fund them enough. The commissioner has now five assistants. Oh. Deputy well, I will say that there, our commissioner is very much on target with this, and uh, well we're not taking up your time on it. But I, I am encouraged with our commissioner. I think he's very proactive in this and recognizes some of the issues. So. Go ahead, Mike. You're our big finale. That's right. No, not a problem at all. Um, I will do TEKS over E-Rate any day. <laughs> <laughs> so back to E-Rate, though. Um, we're certainly um, very glad that you guys took up this particular charge. We think that we do have a very unique opportunity right now. We hope that the next legislature takes advantage of it. It's really hard to find an investment where you're going to get back 10 to 1 within an immediate time frame. We think that's a pretty good investment for the state to make. Um, regardless of what we end up doing from a digital learning perspective, getting that infrastructure in place and that wiring is only going to benefit us. It's not, and I think you even heard today that it's going to go beyond just benefiting the school system, right? Getting that wiring in place into those rural areas is going to benefit other public in works and other public infrastructures as well. Um, and so for such a low cost, you really just, you can't beat that. We do hope that you also, um, as my colleague, Ms. Quincy said, you know, that beyond that, certainly start to look, even if you don't fund this session, um, a broadband initiative, at least start to look at what that plan would look like um, so that you can start to go beyond just hardwiring buildings and into giving broader access within communities. And from that, I want to turn no, uh, because I think that it's, it's very easy to get very excited about technology, because technology is an amazing tool. And I think that uh, one of the earlier testifiers really put it best when they said that Technology amplifies everything, which can be dramatically positive, right? But it's not always dramatically positive when you amplify things. So when you amplify something that's good and is working and you use a research-based program that you know is going to benefit students, that amplification is amazing, and teachers can do amazing things with those tools. But it's important to recognize that it is only a tool. Uh, it is neither a replacement, it is not a babysitter, and it's not something that needs to be put in place without the proper training to go along with it so that it's going to be used properly. Otherwise, you're just sort of throwing money down the drain. Um, and, and with those proper uh, understandings of what technological tools are going to benefit our students and our educators and what are either going to do nothing at all for them or potentially even be hurtful. Um, you know, and I will actually give one example that I, I hope that is something that maybe will spark y'all to take a look at. Um, going back to the SBOE, they had a, a great conference yesterday on teaching children of poverty, and their keynote speaker, the last speaker, um, was a neuroscientist who got up and talked about some very exciting things in the field where neuroscience is now using some technological advancements to actually prep the brains of low socioeconomic kids, not to teach them, but to allow them to be able to learn uh, in sort of the same way that all of the other kids in the state already are prepped. Because what they have found is that there's nothing physically wrong with these kids from a mental standpoint, but the brain is an organ that matures. And when it hasn't received the same stimulus going into the early grades, um, which I think is one of the things that um, Senator Campbell was talking about when she was defending pre-K so ardently at the last hearing, when it hasn't received all of that same stimulus going into those early grades, it hasn't reached the maturation level that the other kids have already reached. That's not to say that there's anything physically wrong, and there are now technological tools that these scientists are coming up with 
that can very quickly help those students get back up to where their peers are at so that they can more adequately intake that knowledge. It gives teachers an ability to really get in there and close that learning gap. And those are the, some of the types of things that we're really excited about in some areas where this very important tool can be used. Well, thank you, Marnie.